Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with the GMK Tech K8 Plus Mini PC because in my review, I promised that we would take a closer look at the OcuLink port that is on this device. And what we're going to do today is actually hook up this GPU using the GPU, this thing, and this thing. We've got a fun science experiment here, so let's get to it. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I do want to let you know that the mini PC here came in free of charge from GMK Tech. However, no other compensation was received. They have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Additionally, all the other stuff that we're going to be featuring in this video are things that I purchased with my own funds. So, let's dive into this and get going here. So, the first thing I wanted to talk about was what OcuLink is. The ba best way to describe it is as a direct to bus connection. So we have seen for many years external GPU enclosures that you can plug into a Thunderbolt or USB 4.0 port, which would allow you to run a GPU, like a desktop GPU, externally from the laptop or mini PC that you're connecting it to. And Thunderbolt works great for that purpose, but it does have a little bit of overhead that eats into the performance a bit. OcuLink, because it plugs you right into the PCI Express bus, is more efficient and therefore theoretically should perform a little faster. And we'll take a look at some comparisons with this GPU, both on a Thunderbolt dock and an OcuLink solution. Right now, the OcuLink solutions are not all that elegant. So I picked this one up recently, and this is kind of the typical OcuLink connection device that you'll encounter out there. As you can see, it is a board on a piece of metal. We have a spot here for an ATX power supply, hence the reason to have a big ATX power supply here in the mix, along with a slot for a PCI Express card. This one is a PCI Express 4.0 adapter, and that is going to give you four lanes of bandwidth right into the bus on the mini PC. And OcuLink right now, I believe, is mostly just four lanes everywhere uh, you might connect to. So you will have some bandwidth limitations with super high performance devices, but for a 4060 GPU like this one in the mid-range, it is adequate as you will see here in a few minutes. And then of course you connect it up to your PC using this OcuLink cable. Now your PC of course will need that OcuLink port for this to work. However, in the box with my OcuLink adapter was this little thing that basically converts any NVMe slot into an OcuLink slot, although it may be harder on some systems to get that cable routed inside, but it is relatively easy here to just plug it into an open NVMe slot to get yourself an OcuLink port. Now there are some more elegant solutions out there for docking. The one that looks the best and the one I probably should have bought if I knew about it at the time is this one from Minisforum. And although it's not all that different than my circuit board we just looked at, it does package itself a little bit nicer here. But you still need to have the external power supply connected for that slot to work. Now there's another one that everyone's been excited about from B-Link, but this is a little different. So this is kind of a proprietary thing that B-Link developed on their own, which gets you an eight-lane connection back to the mini PC, and their dock also has a power supply built in. However, you need to have a compatible B-Link mini PC for this to work. This is not OcuLink. Hopefully they take this design and make an OcuLink version of it because I think it would be nice to have something with at least a power supply integrated. But for now, we're gonna go <laughs> with what we've got here. So why don't we uh, get everything set up now? I'm gonna reposition everything and I will show you how to build yourself your own OcuLink GPU enclosure. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is just get our GPU connected up to our PCI slot here. So I'm going to just slide it in here until it snaps into place. And now that job is done. And so we will put this aside here for a second. Now the next thing we have to do is get all of our power connections ready. So we're going to connect up our big old power supply now. And the first thing we have to do is provide the ATX power to the board here, which I'm going to do. I'm going to put the GPU on its side here for a second, and we're just going to get that connector all lined up here. It is a fine art getting all this to line up properly, but once we get everything into place here, we can just snap that in and get that going. And then, of course, we have to provide power to the GPU separately, just like if we were building our own PC. So we will do that now, and then 
uh, when that is connected, we can move on to the next step. One of the things that surprised me about this when I was doing this on a live stream the other day is actually once you get everything hooked up, it really is just as simple as booting up the machine here to get everything up and running. So let me keep fighting with this power connector here. And when I am done with that, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now that we've got all of our power connections made here, we need to connect up our board to the computer. So as you can see on the output connector here, I've got our Oculink cable connected. And now I'm going to plug that into the PC's Oculink port here. This will click in and to remove the cable, you have to push down the top of it to get it back out again. So we'll get that in there and properly seated. One important note, at least with this mini PC, is that Oculink, unlike Thunderbolt, is not a hot swap technology. So you should not be uh, unplugging or plugging things in while the computer is on. And what I've been doing just to be safe is I just disconnect power from everything completely until all the connections are made here. And now you can see just how impractical <laughs> this really is. Uh, I think it might make a lot more sense to buy a gaming laptop or just make your own desktop here given the fact that all of these separate components now are all sitting on my desk taking up a lot of room. Now, when we plug everything into power, these things won't boot up until the computer goes live. So it will send an on signal via the ATX protocol uh, to get everything running in time for the computer to boot. So I think we're at that time. So let me get the power turned on here and we'll see if this monstrosity boots itself up. All right, we are ready to go here. And one last thing we need to do is plug the GPU into my display. And just like a regular desktop PC, you don't wanna to connect this to the HDMI that is on the uh, mini PC here. You want to connect to the GPU to get the video out from the card here. So now that we've done that, let me hit the power button and you can see everything coming to life here. And what's cool is that because this is a bus connected technology, when we hit the power button, we're getting video immediately right at the boot up side here from the GPU, because this is the equivalent of just popping this GPU into an open slot on a desktop PC. That's basically what we've created here. And earlier, I already got everything set up and installed the drivers. You can actually see me doing this in a live stream that I did the other day. So it was a very simple process to get going. In fact, even without drivers, Windows was able to provide a video signal to the GPU here. And now we are up and running. Now, what I want to do real quick is go over to my 3D Mark benchmark that I have installed on here, just to show you the GPU actually working. And sometimes it does do a bit of hardware detection here because I had been moving the GPU around. And I'll talk more about some of the other experiments I did before we close out the video here. Um, but we'll go ahead here and load up the 3D Mark benchmark and start watching a little 3D rendering here to get a feel for that. But as you can see, it's a very quick process to get this thing running. It's just plug and play, surprisingly, even though it looks like a bit of a contraption here. You will also note that the fans on the GPU are not currently spinning. They only spin up when it needs to. So when it's sitting here at idle on the desktop or just doing some 2D work, you won't see that GPU kick on. So let me get the benchmark going now and we'll take a look and see how this thing works. All right, it looks like that benchmark is about to begin now so we can see everything running and you'll see those fans here kicking on uh, right about now once the uh, GPU starts getting hammered here a bit. Uh, but it's working and it certainly works a lot faster now than it did off of the built-in GPU that's on the Ryzen chip that this ships with. This one has an 8845HS processor. That chip is no slouch, but certainly having an external GPU attached like this 4060 do make a big difference and turn your little mini PC into a nice mid-range gaming PC uh, just by plugging in a bunch of this stuff together. Now, I do have some benchmark results that I ran a bit earlier. And if we take a look at the test that we're looking at right now, which is the Wildlife Extreme benchmark test, I got a score of 19,939 on the Extreme version. And if you look at that Thunderbolt score, that was the score I got when I made use of the mini PC's Thunderbolt USB 4.0 port. And there we got a score of 17,975. So the Oculink, at least on that benchmark, is a bit faster and noticeably so uh, both in frame rates, but also the score that we got at the end of that test. I also ran the 3D Mark Time Spy test and there we got a score of 10,000. 
494. Again, that was slightly better than what we saw out of that same GPU in a Thunderbolt enclosure. And by comparison, you can also see how the chip scored on its own. So you get a huge boost in performance when you connect a GPU up either to the Thunderbolt or to the Oculink, but certainly uh, hooking it up to the Oculink will get you the best performance, especially for an external GPU, but for other cards as well. I know a lot of you might be asking, can you use a Thunderbolt enclosure on the USB 4 port while the Oculink is attached? And the answer is yes. A little earlier on our live stream, I created this monster tower of power where we had the Thunderbolt and the Oculink working side by side. And as you can see here, it works fine. You can get both GPUs to output. And in this example, we were using a GTX 1070 that we hooked up to the Oculink, and then I had the 4060 in that Thunderbolt enclosure. And on top of that, you've got the video outputs on the back of the mini PC, an HDMI and a display port that use the Ryzen chip's internal GPU. So you could get a lot of displays running off of this little piece of hardware, although it'll get uh, much more complicated to position everything, but it's still pretty cool uh, what you can do here with uh, just a couple of components that you piece together here. And as you can see, our RTX 4060 is still cranking away here, delivering video to our display. So all in a pretty fun science experiment and be sure to check out my live stream to see it all unfold in real time. So I think Oculink so far has been pretty cool to play with, although I wish there was an enclosure that could get rid of all of this stuff on my desk and put it into a single box. That's not a hard ask. I'm sure as more and more devices start shipping with Oculink ports, we will see some enclosures to go along with it. Now on the Thunderbolt side, Thunderbolt 5 is starting to make its way into devices that does have more bandwidth than the 40 gigabit per second standard that's built into the USB 4 port on here. So it will be kind of a cat and mouse game between these two connection strategies and each have some strengths because of course you could use Thunderbolt for more than just connecting up desktop cards. But from the standpoint of performance, we're definitely seeing slightly better performance, about 10% or so with this 4060 GPU connecting through the Oculink versus Thunderbolt. And I just wish I had something more elegant to consolidate all these components into. So that'll do it for now. We'll keep an eye on this technology. I'll hang on to my little thing down here. And as more devices start shipping with Oculink, we'll integrate uh, that into our tests and maybe show you some other ways you might be able to make use of this very useful connection technology. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.